Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red Vesuvan Duplomancy deck. After trying out the more casual blue-green version last week, I felt inspired to keep working on the deck to figure out a more competitive build, and I think I found it here with this blue-red version. And how do you make a standard deck more competitive these days? Well, you add four copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is arguably the most powerful card in standard. But besides adding red for Fable, we also get to introduce a ton more synergies, because the goal with any Duplomancy deck of course is to play lots of creatures with enter the battlefield abilities and then you also want a lot of one mana cantrips that can target your own creatures to start making copies and to pull ahead and then what better card than a wandering mind three mana two one flyer when it enters the battlefield we get to look at the top six cards of our library reveal a non-creature non-land card from among them and put it into our hand and the rest goes on the bottom so not only does wandering mind find our one mana cantrips but it can also find our four mana duplomancy as a non-land non-creature spell and it also finds our fable of the mirror breaker so we actually have a very high hit rate with wandering mind and digging six cards deep is also a lot so it's unlikely to miss and usually finds what we're looking for so this is an excellent creature to start copying with a duplomancy as it very likely finds something else that we can do with our mana to make more and more copies and eventually overwhelm the opponent with two one flyers and then we also have the four copies of Ancestral Anger, which is another great upside of playing red as a one mana sorcery that can target our own creature, giving it additional power and trample until end of turn. And the more copies of Anger in the graveyard, the better. And then we also get to draw a card, which is important to keep things flowing. So that's the main game plan, play Duplomancy, and then play some creatures to start copying. And then besides Wandering Mind, we also have two copies of Micromancer, which I didn't have in the blue-green build, even though we could have potentially included a few copies of 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, we may search our library for an instant or sorcery card with mana value 1, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So this can find all our 1-mana cantrips, including Ancestral Anger. And then, like in the blue-green build, I'm also playing four copies of Timely Interference, which can shrink a creature down by one power until end of turn, and then also draw a card so we can target our own creature with Interference, just to make a copy and to draw an extra card can also be kicked in this deck more easily as we have access to red mana to potentially force an opposing creature to block although it doesn't come up very often and then we also have four copies of flame blast bolts as a one mana removal spell dealing two damage to a creature potentially exiling it can also target planeswalkers and in a pinch we can even target our own micromancer to just copy it with a flame blast bolt and get another one mana spell to keep the chain going and I've also copied my own channeler and wandering mind before with a flame blast bolt just to get an extra copy and hopefully pull ahead if a flame blast bolt didn't have any great targets from the opponent's side of the battlefield then we also have three copies of shore up to not only protect our creature but also maybe make a copy give it plus one plus one hexproof and untap it until end of turn and then two copies of Fading Hope for some additional interaction, as we can find it with our Micromancer if we're in a pinch. And then we also have four copies of Ether Channeler, another staple in any Duplomancy deck in my opinion, as it can enter the battlefield, either make a bird token, can return another non-land permanent back to its owner's hand, or draw a card. So all the modes incredibly useful, especially once we start copying it with the Duplomancy. And then we can go back to Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which besides giving us extra mana with a Shaman token, which is very helpful in maybe playing a turn for Duplomancy, and having the mana to cast a one mana cantrip to get immediate value it also eventually transforms into a reflection of kiki jiki which can also start copying our creatures so even if we don't have duplomancy we can still easily win the game with a transformed reflection copying channeler wandering mind and micromancer and then i also really wanted at least one copy of leer in the deck as a way to recycle all our one mana spells and if we copy it with a duplomancy the token is not legendary so that's a way to get additional copies of leer to make sure that if the opponent kills one of them we at least still have access to our graveyard and then the mana base is pretty straightforward for each dual land we've got crucible and soaring city and then eight islands six mountains as far as sideboarding goes if you're interested in playing this in best of three there's also a few nice sideboard cards like torch breath that you could play as an uncounterable spell that gets a two mana discount when targeting blue creatures so shines against a very small blue decks playing haughty Jin and tolerian terror as it's also one mana card you can potentially find with micromancer so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got some early interaction. Channeler to eventually copy with the Duplomancy. And can start out by drawing a card. 
Turn 3 Fable always powerful. So we might start there. Even if something like Thalia were to show up, we could answer it and still play a Fable on curve. It's our opponent's black-white. Could mean they have answers to enchantments. Destroy Evil comes to mind. And they're gonna use it on the Fable, so now the Duplomancy is more likely to stick around. Could really use the extra mana. Opponents on Esper. And a Brutal Cathar, perfect answer to the Fable token, as we won't be getting it back. Okay, so now what's probably just Channeler to draw? And still need to hit our land drop. It's gonna be a tap land, three mana available. And a Rafine, which can grow the Brutal Cathar here, so it gets out of bolt range, but they're not gonna attack. Okay, so we have options. Playing the Duplomancy is tempting. Or we can deal with a Brutal Cathar before it picks up any more counters and helps Rafine. Could also double Bolt Rafine and be tapped out. And then hope to pick up a land next turn so we can go Duplomancy plus copy the channeler right away. Don't actually hate that. And then I'll attack, since I don't think my opponent's blocking here. And if our opponent taps out for Kaito, that's fine by me. Okay. So step one, I could attack, although if they have a Wandering Emperor, I want to make sure we play the Duplomancy first. Okay, and then we'll hit for two. And then I can pass with Shore Up available. Opponent using Abandoned Mire to get back Rafine, perhaps. And then next turn we could play a second Duplomancy. Danik is fine. So opponent will try to flip back the Brutal Cathar. Thalia is annoying. So, what's the move? If I want to shore up, I have to do it now. Brutal Cathar will transform back, so we could wait for that to trigger next turn and then give up on the double Duplomancy dream. So we'll shore up. Could bounce Thalia in the hopes of drawing into a land with our draw step. That's also an option. All right, there we go. So I can play another Duplomancy. Now we have two channelers to start copying with Anger. So now we've got our engines online. Shieldred's always powerful, although we can bounce it. So step one, copy channeler to bounce Shieldred's. And I guess with the way the triggers work, uh, let's see, I think this one will resolve before we get another copy, so yeah, this one will bounce. And then the next one can draw. Finding a Wandering Mind, perfect. So, use my Colorless Mana here, since we still have red from Crucible. And find a Fable which we can cast. And I'll start attacking. Our opponent can replay Shieldred to punish the second chapter, but I'm probably still fine to draw one card. No Meat Hook Massacre to worry about here to wipe the board. So there's Shieldred's. And we just need to find a couple more spells to target our creatures with. I think I'm still fine discarding Island here, going to 7. 
And then Ancestral Anger on Channeler. Bounce and draw. Or we could bounce Danik as well here. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Double Duplomancy gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Kick things off with a Fading Hope. Hopefully get a Fable going. And then Leer is good to late game. Turn one Evolved Sleeper. I guess we'll wait one more turn to bounce it, since we don't have many turn two plays anyway. And then I'll take one and maybe bounce their two drop instead. Opponent is black white. And an underdog, I'm happy to fading hope. And then Ether Channeler is probably good to keep. Also fun to copy with Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And then hoping to pick up a Duplomancy at some point. Opponent with another Brutal Cathar to exile our token. Okay. Popular card today. And there's a Duplomancy. So do I ditch a Fable? Or do I run it out right now? My hand's pretty good, so chapter 2 from Fable's not doing me too many favors, so maybe it's actually fine to discard. And then hope to pick up some cheap cantrips. Micromancer is also a fun one. So at least Micromancer stabilizes the board, and then if I pick up a land, I can play Duplomancy and copy it right away. And then going for maybe a shore up is fine, or I can go for one of the cantrips that draws. Let's go with Shore Up. Having Shore Up in the mix will also make it easier to protect Leer. And another Brutal Cathar to deal with Micromancer. Okay. Take three. And our opponent's gonna level up, so make that four. So we are under pressure, but Ether Channeler bouncing Brutal Cathar. And then we can keep up Shore Up to protect. And maybe go for a Fading Hope now. As another bounce spell, since we already have Interference. Or I could go for a Flame Blast Bolt, which is probably even better. Okay, so now we've got our Reflection in play. And ways to protect it. So Cathar, a great answer to a Shaman token. A little bit worse when facing creatures with ETB effects. Sleeper can attack. I'll just take it here. Not interested in blocking and playing a game of chicken here with our removal. So they're gonna level it up. It's gonna be pretty trivial to bounce once we get our engines going. And a Guardian of New Benalia. Still need to worry about a cut down potentially killing Reflection, so I'm just going to untap here as opposed to trying to kill anything. And there's a land, perfect. So I could also play a Duplomancy, pass with Reflection available at instant speed as well as one mana instance. Seems worth it. So if our opponent has a cut down, they're probably going to go for it now. So they probably don't have one. So I'll pass it back. If we can untap with Duplomancy and all our mana, we can very easily take over. So we can play the control role for now. Probably gonna take a hit here. Guardian up to 4 power. Gets to scry. And I think I'm fine taking 7. We'll just have to watch out if our opponent is playing Invoke Despair. 
If we get too low, we could die to it, but we still have some enchantments and creatures to sacrifice. So, yeah, let's just take it. Could also block with Ether Channeler on Guardian, force him to discard a card and soak up four damage. Although having the Channeler available to bounce creatures later seems nice. So yeah, close call. If I block the Sleeper with Micromancer, what happens? They could level it up for three mana. Still have two mana to interact, so if I go to copy with Reflection, things could go south. Maybe I should just uh, soak up a little bit of damage with a Channeler and then still have Micromancer to copy later. Opponent discarding Underdog, no surprises there. So just playing it extra safe. Opponent did not level up Evolved Sleeper, so they're planning something else. And it's going to be a Peacekeeper to have a look, leaving two mana untapped. Alright, I guess that happens. And then the plan is probably end of turn, copy Micromancer. And if they kill Micromancer, it has to be with Infernal Grasp and not cut down. But then I'll still have Reflection, and then Reflection can start copying itself, which is also pretty powerful. Or I can just untap and not run into any removal whatsoever. Although then they can just name Shorup with a Peacekeeper. So if they don't name Shorup, then they probably don't have removal in hand at instant speed here. Alright, opponent names Shorup. So, could also go for Interference to copy the Reflection. Sure, let's try that. Because I'll get the copy regardless. And that way we're guaranteed to have a Reflection left. As opposed to trying to copy Micromancer and running into Infernal Grasp. Okay, so now copy Micromancer. Probably get Fading Hope. Although I could do this in the opponent's turn. Just want to make sure the Brutal Cathar doesn't transform back. So I could also bolt it now if I'd like. Sure. And then we can do everything else at instant speed. Alright, I think we're fine here. Pass it back. Thalia does make things a little bit more complicated, so I'm probably going to start by copying Micromancer while we can still protect with Shorup and get something like a Fading Hope. And then I can Fading Hope the Peacekeeper now if I'd like. While we don't have to pay the Thalia tax, and then I can still shore up afterwards. Or continue copying with our reflection. Land seems fine since we have plenty of ways to spend our mana. And Thalia we can take out with a Flame Blast Bolt. If they play Brutal Cathar to try and exile a token we can protect it. So there's Brutal Cathar. Goes for the 3-3 three, three Micromancer. Sure. That one was going to get exiled end of turn anyway. Opponent probably doesn't want to exile an actual creature, since we'll be able to deal with a Cathar pretty easily. Guardian attacks. Can just copy Micromancer here. And chump it. We'll shuffle away the island, but that's okay. So we'll get a bolt. Force them to discard if they want to save Guardian. Discards Peacekeeper. Okay. We get to untap. And another Shorup's excellent, so start by dealing with Thalia, which is pretty annoying. Keep it daytime. And then just pass with all our instants available. Just keeping the board under control. 
making sure we keep our life total high and Duplomancy will take care of the rest. Guardian and Sleeper attack. So what's the plan here? Can let our opponents cry. Could go for a interference on Micromancer just to make a copy. And what else do we get? Maybe time to start getting Ancestral Anger to turn the corner. And then copy the copy, I guess. Leave up Shore up, just to be safe. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, this is gonna get out of hand very quickly as soon as we feel comfortable tapping out onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I don't think I can keep this one in good conscience with uh, no creature, no third land. Pretty far from getting the Duplomancy going. This is better. And then one of the cantrips can probably go. And I uh, guess I'll keep the interference, which I can also use in an opposing creature if things go south. Opponent on a Bant deck. And there's a Duplomancy, okay. Just need to hit our land drops and hope our spells resolve. Opponent could also be playing Farewell, which is one of the more effective sweepers against us, as it can also deal with our enchantment. King Darien, okay. Is our opponent a tokens deck, perhaps? I think I'm okay bouncing it with Channeler, especially if I draw land. Or I can just draw with a Channeler, because I do want to get this Duplomancy going. And Wandering Minds, while great, does not draw us into lands. So that's where the channel is still useful early game, especially. Fable could come in handy. So we'll see if our opponent can keep up the pressure here. Take two for now. And we might see some tokens. Gala Greeters makes sense. And they might be hanging on to reinforcements to make 2 one ones at instant speed. Okay, there's land for Duplomancy. Question is, can I afford to run it out here? I think I go Fable, keep up our one mana instance, including Bolts, which can deal with the Gala Greeters in response to reinforcements so it doesn't get out of hand. And then the Shaman hopefully gives us more mana to potentially play Duplomancy and copy something right away. So I should try and keep the Channeler alive if I can. There's the reinforcements. And that's the dead Gala Greeters. Okay, so we're still under quite a bit of pressure here. But it could have been a lot worse. And then I just need to get an attack in with our Shaman to get Duplomancy going. So do we take six? I think so. Could double block King Darien. And that's not a bad double block. What can the opponent play here? Wandering Emperor, I suppose, to punish that. Yeah, I guess we'll play around a Wandering Emperor. Okay. Do I want to discard anything? I think my hand's pretty good as is. So submit zero. Play a Duplomancy before attacking in case we need to shore up the Shaman token here and get some extra advantage. Hope they don't have any counter spells, which is still very much possible. 
But I've got them on Wandering Emperor. I'm kind of hoping they're going to try and set up an ambush since we have Shore up for protection. Drawing the land meant they cannot mess with our Shaman before making an extra mana, which otherwise could have been the case. So we'll pass. And then Interference can copy Channeler at instant speed as well. I hope you're ready to lose. Shore up on the Shaman will also give it plus one in addition to untapping it, so that could be fun. As our opponent makes a Samurai token. Alright. So our opponent appears to be in a pretty dominant board position, but uh, these two one mana instants are hopefully going to make the difference. So I could start with Interference, my channeler, Bounce, King Darien. Opponent has not activated Wandering Emperor yet, so that's probably making a Samurai. Still get to draw here, and then shore up untapping the Shaman seems like good value. Especially now with Channeler to find more action alongside Wandering Mind. Having extra Shamans for additional mana is going to come in handy. And then if they have another Wandering Emperor in hand, it would kind of surprise me since they haven't activated the first one, since you would usually do that if you're planning to replace it. So I'm gonna make the greedy blocks like so. That works. And now we're ahead on board. Destroy evil, maybe a little too late here, destroying the Duplomancy, but that will set us back. And Emperor makes a token. Okay, still have a Reflection coming up, and hopefully Wandering Mind can find another Duplomancy. For now, do I want to attack? I guess it depends if we maybe find some additional interaction here with a Wandering Mind, or I could always channel or bounce King Darien first, and then attack, make the treasures, which will help us cast a Wandering Mind. Sure. and turn these uh, shamans into kind of a tempo advantage by making more mana. I'll send the shamans at Wandering Emperor, since that will die regardless, these face. So if they want to trade for a shaman, which is worth more, then we'll deal more damage to the opponents. And we could still interfere in the opponent's shaman token too if we wanted to, but... Uh, play Wandering Mind. Could have also kicked an interference, but didn't seem necessary, and a flame blast bolt is good interaction too. Hopefully no farewell here. Although for points a token deck, it would be a bit surprising. They could still have an answer to reflection of Kiki Jiki. Did not find a shore up to protect it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome! So yeah, managed to stabilize nicely and get a ton of value, even if we just controlled the Duplomancy for one turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. We'll need to find a third land, but can always cycle these on opposing creatures as well if needed. Turn one pack leader. Luckily we have a Flame Blast Bolt. If a Beast Caller shows up, that's probably what I want to kill instead. Opponent red green and there's Beast Scholar, so that's what's getting bolted here. But yeah, we're on the back foot, so can't afford to miss a land drop. So I think I cycle the anger on the pack leader. And then interference as well. Really hoping to find a land three. Another beast caller. At least with a channeler we can eventually bounce it, so if it picks up a few counters, it's not the end of the world. 
All right, there's a land so we can play. And uh, yeah, I think I start with Channeler, Bounce, Beast Caller, just to set them back a little bit. And then even if they play a 4-drop, I can still trade Channeler for Pack Leader. And then next turn, maybe Micromancer find a 1-mana removal spell. We have Leer for the late game, so we just need to make sure we don't take any unnecessary damage early on. Phoenix Chick, okay. Can eventually exile it with a Flame Blast Bolt. And Ancestral Anger. So we have options. I think Micromancer makes a little bit more sense than Fable since I don't necessarily want to play Anger this turn. And Micromancer gives us a bigger board presence. And then I can either get a Fading Hope or a Flame Blast Bolt. We have Channeler as another bounce effect, so maybe getting Bolts is fine. Although there is a Bolt in the Graveyard to eventually replay with Leer. So you could see the advantage of a Fading Hope too. And pass. And then next turn I could maybe go for Fable, keep up Fading Hope. Stormseeker is a good one. Happy to trade Micromancer for it. Although it might be pumping something else. Nope, pumps itself. So trade, take five. Land is good. Am I back on maybe Channeler to bounce Beast Caller? If I get Fable going, then I also kind of get Leer going by making additional mana. So I'll still favor Fable. And then I guess I'll keep Anger in hand in case we pick up a Dupomancy. can also discard it to the second chapter. Opponent knows about Fading Hope. I'm hoping there's no one mana protection like time you're safekeeping. Opponent found a fourth land, partners. Yeah, that's a good one. So pack leader and channeler still trade. So the question is, do I bounce partners or do I bounce beast caller? Partners likely pumping Phoenix Chick, which would then get out of range of a um, Flame Blast Bolt. So maybe for now still bounce partners. And then beast caller attacks. I'll probably take it, and then next turn at least the Shaman has a good attack, which is another reason to bounce partners here. And then we can get Leer in play to hopefully stabilize us. Alright, we're down to four. I'll keep the lands, Anger can go. And then I think Shaman attacks since it buys us an extra mana for Leer. Fine if it trades for Pack Leader. Which will also pick up an extra counter next turn when they replay partners. And then play a Leer. And pass with Bolt and Fading Hope available. Okay, there's the partners, growing Beast Caller and Pack Leader. So I'm probably chumping the Beast Caller. Question is whether I bolt the Pack Leader now. I could also just shrink it down with the Interference and then block with Leer. So I think we let this partners resolve and all the triggers. And then we'll wait and see where they put the counters. If it goes on Phoenix Chick, I can bolt a Phoenix Chick. Uh, on pack leader. So in that case, we probably bounce the pack leader here. Chum Beast Caller and Bolt Phoenix Chick. Next turn, Channeler can bounce something else. And if we get to untap with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki to copy Channeler, that's a big deal. Okay, so Chump bounce pack leader. It's gonna cost us one life. And do I want to bolt? 
Yeah, I think Bolt is good since we can cast it twice, so that kills partners. Bolt Phoenix check now. And hope there's no lightning strike in our future. So play Channeler, tapping as many Shivan Reeves as possible, pretty much. Double Bolt Partners, and then Shaman Token can attack. Does Leer attack, I think, might be worth keeping back in case of any larger haste creature. Okay. Still at three life, can feel too comfortable. And yep, yeah, sadly our opponent had the lightning strike. GG's. And there's no counter spell we can draw. Most Gruul decks, to my knowledge, don't have lightning strike, but uh, sadly this one did. Possible we could have played more conservatively to keep our life total a tad higher. I guess drawing triple Sheevan Reef here is what made the difference. On to the next one. And hope there's no lightning strike in our future. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand does need a creature to go with the Duplomancy, but having a Bolt as early interaction helps to buy time, and then can always cycle the interference if I want to draw lands, or hopefully a creature between Channeler, Fable, and our uh, Wandering Mind. We have a lot of great 3-drops we can find in the meantime. Opponent on Black-White. So, Duplomancy not guaranteed to stick around. And a turn to Companion, okay. So maybe an enchantment deck. Could be playing with Azur. Which probably does mean that our opponent has quite a few ways to deal with opposing enchantments. I'll just cycle this Anger. And cycle an Interference on the Companion next turn, I think. Okay. There's some red mana and the Liliana of the Veil. Vale. That could be rough. Bolt can sort of keep it in check, but uh, you think you can that's going to put pressure on our hand. So let's see what we draw first. Probably a shore up can go. You won't be outsmarting me. At least it is symmetrical, but our opponent might actually be a reanimator deck, which actively wants to discard the Sanctuary Warden. Companion attacks, save myself a bit of life. And there's Fable, okay. Now Liliana can take care of it. And it also gets around shore up, so probably no point in keeping it. Opponent discarding another Sanctuary Warden. Opponent has quite a bit of white mana, so it could also be an Invoke Justice deck. And then the question is, do I bolt Liliana now? I guess we can take an extra draw step first. Chandler can bounce Liliana. Do we do that now? And then next turn I can go Duplomancy. Although I don't really want to bolt my own creature necessarily. Sure, and then if our opponent goes for Invoke Justice, I guess we have the option of potentially copying Chandler with Duplomancy to keep it in check. Could also make a bird token to protect from Liliana, but I imagine our opponent's got some spot removal available too. And then if our opponent goes replay Liliana to minus, then Bolt can finish it off. Alright, so there's Liliana again. Let's make this quick. It's gonna minus two. 
So let's exile Liliana. And a Wandering Mind is pretty great. I think we wait on Duplomancy until I can get immediate value, so for now play Wandering Mind. Or do we play Fable? Maybe getting Fable going is not so bad. Could also bait out removal for enchantments, so that Duplomancy is more likely to stick around. Still expecting a big play from the opponent next turn, either Hardcast Sanctuary Warden or maybe an Invoke Justice. So not sure if I should play out a land to play around Liliana's plus one, but they're more likely to minus two at this point. So I'll play out the land since we might need it. And yeah, there's a destroy evil to destroy fable. So now Duplomancy. Breathe a sigh of relief here. Six mana, two cards in hand, and a wedding announcement. That's manageable. And I would be ecstatic to find some 1-mana instants to target our creatures here with a Wandering Mind. To get the Duplomancy going, Fading Hope's also excellent. Okay, so how about we attack, save they double block, in which case I Fading Hope the token. Play a Wandering Mind. And another Duplomancy. I think I'm liking Ancestral Anger, actually. And then we'll pass, probably planning to bounce a token so they can't draw with the announcements. Although I could also keep it to bounce my own Wandering Mind, in case something bad happens to it. Since that's a card we really want to target with Anger. Yeah, letting them draw with announcements, not the end of the world. So I'll probably take the hit. Another Liliana means I'll have to get rid of the Shaman. And take two. Can attack down Liliana. I guess we'll start there. If they have removal, they would fire it off anyway in response to a Duplomancy. And yeah, there's a cut down. So Fading Hope the Wandering Mind. Micromancer seems good. So I don't want to replay Wandering Mind because Micromancer would not be a card we can actually find with it. I uh, don't want to waste Anger. So I guess that means just play Duplomancy and hope there's no Destroy Evil. And then next turn I can play Wandering Mind or Micromancer and start a chain and discard a Sheevan Reef to Liliana. Micromancer can get a Bolt to finish off Liliana. Okay. So hoping Duplomancy sticks around. That's the important part. And a Rite of Oblivion sadly means they can exile it here. So not what we wanted to see. But at least we still have a way to deal with Liliana. And our opponent has to sacrifice a token here. Okay, let's just do this now. Liliana down, and then Wandering Mind can maybe find another Duplomancy, that would be the dream. Dratfeast Demon, oh wow. Not what I was expecting here. Well, let's see if we get lucky. Fading Hope would be a card we're interested in too now. There's a Duplomancy. Okay. Well, I got my wish, but um, at what cost? Play Duplomancy now. And then most likely gonna take 14. And then uh, we need to string together some one mana cantrips into a Fading Hope into something else. These don't trample, so I can chum block. Spirit Sister's Call also threatening. So what can that get back? 
choose a permanent card in your graveyard, you may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type to bring it back. So they can sacrifice a creature to bring back Sanctuary Warden, basically. That's bad. Oh, well, I think we're jumping here since I can't afford to go to one. And then Anger can chain with the Micromancer. Eventually getting a Fading Hope. But it's going to be tough. And I guess if they stack these triggers correctly, they can even sacrifice the 1-1 one -one from Warden to turn it into a demon. So that was a very impactful Spirit Sisters call. Opponent's got three demons, although another Duplomancy. Can that save me? So play this, copy Micromancer, get... Do we have two Fading Hopes left? I guess there's only one since there's one in the graveyard. So that doesn't do it. So if I go for Duplomancy, I think I'm just dead. If I anger into another answer, I might be okay. But we don't have a ton of answers left. I guess like a channeler to bounce would do it. So definitely getting a Fading Hope, but I might want to get something else first, like another Anger. Could also maybe look to kick Interference at some point. Just a land for now. Yeah, Anger again, I guess. Get another one. There's Channeler, okay. So now, Anger get Fading Hope. And Channeler can bounce another one. Attack for 12. And uh, I guess we'll pass. Companion can turn into another large creature out of the graveyard. Opponent is at 6. So we'll see how aggressive they get. I would love to not have to use Fading Hope so we can play another Duplomancy first. Uh oh, Midnight Sky. I think that might be game over sadly since they can sacrifice it to deal 2 damage to me. And that's actually gonna do it here. Oh no. So close to actually stabilizing and maybe even winning the game next turn. But I think our opponents figured it out here. Sacrifice Midnight Sky, deal 2 damage. And that's game. So they actually needed something else here, otherwise we would have been in a prime position to win. Maybe they get the greedy and sacrifice companion here, but no, opponent sees the line. And at one life, that should do it. Alright, GG. Still a cool game here and a cool deck from our opponent too. So, got to see our blue-red deck in action. So still a deck with a ton of potential and I'm excited to see where it can go in the future. But for now, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.